film professor became obsessed with a Hollywood screenwriter who disappeared over a decade ago. A year passed with no new leads, then the writer's car was found submerged in mud at the bottom of an aqueduct. There was a body inside. The body had no hands. The professor didn't buy the official story, and with great cost to himself and his family and friends, he went to Los Angeles to find out what really happened to the screenwriter. From there, only madness. Notice I didn't tell you what kind of film The Writer With No Hands is. That title and my synopsis make it sound like a psychological horror movie. It's, it's evoking paranoia and self-destruction and shadowy figures with inscrutable motives. The Writer With No Hands is a documentary. Everything I told you about it is real. The film professor is named Matt Alford. The screenwriter was named Gary DeFore. A body with no hands was found in Gary DeVore's car at the bottom of the California aqueduct in the late 90s. And Matt Alford wanted answers. The Writer with No Hands looks like a documentary. It's marketed as a documentary. Uh, but by the end, it doesn't feel like a documentary. So naturally, I came to this conclusion. Gary DeVore was one of those thankless screenwriters who was known for writing and punching up mid-budget star vehicles in the 80s and 90s. Stuff he definitely saw on the shelves at Blockbuster, or in my case, Little Dukes, but never rented because, fuck me, someone finally returned the battle for Endor. Often uncredited, Gary worked on movies like Raw Deal, Time Cop, Passenger 57, and Running Scared. Damn it, I meant uh, this, this Running Scared. And then, in the prime of his storied career, he up and disappears. Here's a little more context on that. At the time of his disappearance, Gary was returning to Los Angeles to turn in his latest screenplay. And then, that year later, when his car was found, his laptop containing the screenplay was also missing, along with the hands. It's rumored the screenplay involved some dirty government secrets. You see, old Gary might have had some ties to the Central Intelligence Agency. Enter Matt Alford, a mild-mannered film professor and family man who just so happens to have turned his garden shed into a Gary DeVore murder board. You know, like True Detective. Matt's convinced the CIA assassinated Gary DeVore because his screenplay was too spicy. It sounds like a pretty good documentary, doesn't it? And, and it really is. I, I can't recommend the movie highly enough. Uh, but talking about it like a documentary leaves me a little cold. Because at the end of the day, the movie fails as a documentary. There's no real satisfying answer to Gary DeVore's case. Through the course of its narrative and statements made by Matt Alford, by the conclusion, the writer with no hands abandons its investigation along with any journalistic responsibility towards the facts it discussed. Alford says, explicitly that the film is merely a work of entertainment rather than a serious investigation. The writer with no hands bails on its documentary premise and course corrects by screaming satire parody instead. Before I watched The Writer with No Hands, I read a little book. It's called The Dialectic of Enlightenment by Max Horkheimer and Theodore Adorno. They wrote it during World War II, and the basic premise is this. Enlightenment, understood in the widest sense as the advance of thought, has always aimed at liberating human beings from fear and installing them as masters. Yet the wholly enlightened earth radiates under the sign of disaster triumphant. Again, the book was written during World War II by left-wing German intellectuals. What they're basically saying in that quote is, what good is enlightenment if it led to the Holocaust? So the titular dialectic of enlightenment boils down to this. Myth is already enlightenment, and enlightenment reverts to mythology. So we know what enlightenment is from earlier. The advance of thought, specifically in the Western tradition, with the aim at liberating humans from fear and installing them as masters. Enlightenment is basically the value system of modernity. It prizes logic, facts, and reason. So on the flip side of enlightenment, we've got myth. And myth is everything that enlightenment is not. It's the religious, it's the ritualistic, it's the irrational. 
So we under generally understand enlightenment to be good and progressive and myth to be bad and regressive. Our pals Max and Ted dare to ask, what if myth is good sometimes and what if enlightenment is bad sometimes? And what if they kind of depend on each other? What if you can't have one without the other? So if myth can be good, how is enlightenment bad? So the flip side is that enlightenment, when it reaches the limits of knowledge, facts, and reason, it reverts to mythology. If reason has no aim, if it can't find the answer it's looking for, it fills the gaps with myth. So since the question they're asking in this book is, what good is enlightenment if the Holocaust happened? Max and Ted conclude that it's not the result of irrationality as such, but the result of bare reason followed to its absurd end simultaneously at multiple levels of society. So there's a lot going on in the book, but we're here to talk about movies, so let's get back into that. If it fails to deliver on its premise as a documentary and ultimately claims to be mere entertainment, what is the writer with no hands actually doing? What kind of film did it become by the end? I started up top by saying genre is bullshit and I stand by that. Genre is bullshit. It's primarily a way to categorize and sell things in a market economy. It's not a hard and fast rule of film criticism. But like with everything, if you play around with it and don't take it too seriously, genre can be a useful tool. It can be, it can be a fun thing. Since genre is bullshit, I think The Writer With No Hands is better discussed as a found footage horror thriller rather than a documentary. Since it throws out any claim to rational journalistic truth, all that's left is a story about a paranoid film professor and his obsession with an unsolved disappearance. It becomes a horror thriller that uses documentary style and the accompanying sense of realism to weave a chilling tale about the ties, real and imagined, avowed and disavowed, that exist between American intelligence agencies and Hollywood. Remember what I said a few minutes ago? Gary DeVore, hack screenwriter extraordinaire, might have had some CIA ties. Regardless of the facts that the writer with no hands may or may not contain, the world it portrays is one in which normal, everyday people encounter the raw power of America's clandestine services. It's a world where we can never quite get that peek behind the curtain, because too much scrutiny fragments into ever-expanding webs of unthinkable questions and absolute dread. There is no concrete proof of this power, only shadows and contours left by its absence. The writer with no hands has the ending of a horror movie. Genre be damned, evidence and facts be damned, the movie still tells a story at the end of the day. And the fact is that truth and stories aren't mutually exclusive. So now we bring back in the, uh, the dialectic of enlightenment stuff. The writer with no hands begins in the spirit of enlightenment. It wants to find the truth by corroborating its claims through material evidence, documents, eyewitness testimony, the whole deal. When it fails, when the documentary reaches the material limit of knowledge related to Gary DeVore's case, it reverts to mythology. Though it can't prove anything, it's still telling a story. It's invoking higher truths about the nature, identity, and possible motives of the people who wield real power in this world. So we're back to the beginning of the dialectic.